Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. And in the co-captain's chair today, we haven't seen him in a little bit, but he's always coming back. Mr. Rich Catino. Hello, guys. What's going on? All right. Thanks for having me back. As as tonight is also the Halloween Hammerfall show. And I got my patch there. Yep, in New York at. City, right? Yep, going yep. on as well. Yeah, that's uh, what's that? Terminal Five? Is that where that's that's at? Terminal Five, yeah. That place is weird. I haven't been there in a while. It's a weird venue. I haven't been there in a long time either. In fact, I think the last band I saw there was yeah. the New Borger. Oh, okay. Yeah, the headline there, I think, on the Ionian tour, I think it was, or maybe it was the Okay, look at Dabra album. I don't know. One, one of those two tours. I don't remember. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's a weird venue, right? It's got it's like kind of shaped weird, and you got the upper area which is looks down onto the stage yeah. and there's never a good place to stand and there's lots of blockages of sight and uh, i don't know oh, okay. it's, it's in a weird place it's like out in the middle of nowhere in the city it's there's not really much around there it's so, over by the west side right it's kind of yeah out, out of the way of other places and stuff yep, yeah I yep. remember. and if i remember correctly there's only really like one bar or pub near the venue and there's nothing else around like uh. nothing Okay, so, but uh, yeah, it was either Dimu or In Flames. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I saw Dream Theater there. I, I've seen a lot of bands there, but it's but it's been a while because they really yeah. they don't have all that much there anymore. Hmm. But I guess with some of these venues disappearing and closing down, they're you know, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, hmm. we are here to rank the catalog of Norwegian symphonic black metal band Dimu Borgir. We just mentioned them before, so uh, they have been around since the early nineties. Right. Uh, they haven't been all that busy of late, but for a good kind of decade plus, they were cranking out albums left and right. We've got nine studio albums. Right. Now, I will say there is one album, uh, their second album called Storm Blast, that they actually re-recorded back in 2005 or so. Uh, yeah. So we're going to kind of, uh, you know, it's basically the same album, just re-recorded a little bit different. So yeah, I think there's like two songs missing, I think. Yeah, yeah. So and it, it sounds a little different and whatnot. So we're we're not going to rank them both separately. So we're just going to do them as one. So uh, so too bad, of, really too bad about that album when they did the artwork. Too bad they didn't get the contrast better because you can't see the demon's face inside that hooded. It's like the black and everything. Mom. Yeah, it's yeah, just, and you don't see really what's going on. If you could see a little more, you know, features what's going on, it'd be great. But it's just too too dark, you know, not enough contrast. Yeah. No, nope, not at all. I always thought yeah. that was kind of a big misfire when that came out. But um, yeah. Anyway, so we've ranked them in our order of preference. So we'll start at number nine. We'll work our way back to number one. We'll have Rich kick us off with his number nine. Okay. And by the way, how unlikely is it that you have me doing a black metal band, right? Ranking. Everybody would probably expect me to be doing glam metal or power metal or traditional metal right but trust me there were like, like all my black metal you know there were all sorts of comments over the last couple of days since i've announced <laughs> this show they're like rich doing a black right? metal band i figured he'd yeah. be up for a power metal or, a, or a, a hair metal band or something like that so yeah. yeah i do like my my black metal in small doses depending on the band what they do you know yep yep i hear it and like you know, you rich and i talked about this a long time ago we've had this one in the yeah. works for quite a few months so uh yes we finally got around to doing it so uh <laughs> and i like yeah. a lot of the forefathers obviously i like like bathory and um who else from the 80s you got well you got like mayhem and emperor from the latter part not like, really the later the that's night. later stuff like the 80s who am i forgetting right now like i would consider early merciful fate very kind of black metal-ish right yep. and yep. there's elements, elements there uh there's elements, elements in celtic frost and celtic frost and yeah possessed and stuff yeah yeah yes possessed right so yeah my roots are in you know the 80s black metal before it evolved and got really big in the 90s yeah exactly all right so i'm starting with for all tid i don't know if that's how you pronounce it because that's a norwegian right yeah, for all tid. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know exactly. Which means I think for all time, right? If I'm correct? I think so. Yep. Yep. Yes, for all time. So, um, yeah, this is really, if you're looking for pure black metal, this is like that, right? It's so primitive, rough. The vocals are like very distant. The drums are distant. The bass, it's just like totally lost in the mix, right? Very <laughs> tingy, 
right? It's just like old guitars. <laughs> Can't understand the words, <laughs> right? They're just, this is as old school black metal as you want to get. But you still have like those keyboards that are coming in, the synthesizers, which create some moods and some textures, which is good. But you can tell that they're they're really not there figuring out their songs yet. They're trying to figure out how to work it all together into one piece of music, you know? I think the one song I wrote down was, um, let's see, in my notes here. Well, you got the New Kingdom that has the spoken word. I don't yeah. know how to pronounce it in its original Norwegian language, because that's what yeah. written. all the words are in Norway, right? Yeah, they're all Norway. Yeah, it's all Norwegian. Yeah. yeah, so that song, and what was the other one I got here? Under Wings of, what's that one? Under the Wings of the Raven, cool title. So mm -hmm. I wrote that one down. Um, that achieves a little more of the balance between the dark, savage, and the orchestral parts, I thought. Under Carpen's Vinger. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's a, you know, it's their start. It's 1995. It's when they got started. So yeah, yeah. They're just figuring it all out, you know? Well, that's my number nine as well. Okay. Um, that's the second cover, by the way. The first one's all monochromatic. It's exactly. Yeah. Even, even this black. looks kind of primitive, but yeah, it's definitely, this was the, the issue, which came yeah. out in 2000. But um, yeah, I mean, this is like really crude by, you know, how they would start to sound on their third album. I mean, it's amazing the difference in a couple of years, like how this band just matured very, very quickly. And it's an interesting lineup too. So this has Shagrath playing drums. Right. right? Silenaz is singing and playing right. guitar. And then you got, uh, again, I'm going to butcher these names, uh, Brinjard Tristan on bass and Stian Arsted on keyboards and a guy named Tijale on guitars. So it's like, it's kind of like a weird lineup and it's just, it's bizarre. I mean, Shagrath played like everything in this band and then eventually became just a singer, but he was guitar yeah. lead guitarist for a while. He played bass, he played drums. It's just like really, right. um, total lo-fi production. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> the it, it's funny. I hadn't listened to this album in a while. And then when I played it uh, recently, I was like the, the, the lead vocals, especially the harsh vocals, they sound like they're rising from like five miles below the surface of the earth or coming up from a crypt or something like that. Yeah. It's, just, it's when you it's listen actually, to it. It's actually perfect for old school black metal. Right? It is, but man, it's just, it's funny because it's just, it's so different than so much of their other stuff that's so polished and right. symphonic and bombastic. And then this is just so primitive and crude. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and the clean vocals are weird too, because it sounds like some guy is just sitting there like reading poetry. You know, because still right, right. both the harsh, the harsh and the clean vocals. And it's just like, yeah. I don't know. And, you know, there's blast beats and spots on here. The guitar riffs are really kind of like cold and jagged. Uh, yeah. There's some good stuff on here, though. And it's some of it's really evil sounding. Some of it's just kind of weird sounding. Uh, right. It's not quite as big and bombastic and grandiose as their right. later stuff. It's but, got but, very, I wrote down two kind of goth synthy kind of sounds. A going little on. bit. Yep, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, I think the artsiness of this band just hasn't come yeah. out yet. Um, but that being said, there's kind of a charm to it, right? It just, right. I know people who love this kind of lo-fi, uh, primal. Right. Kind of pure, metal. pure, untainted, you know, yeah. black metal. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I know plenty of people who would rather listen to this album than any of the later ones, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah. And I get that. Uh, but to me, this is, you, you said it perfectly. It's a band who hasn't really kind of figured out what right. they're going to do yet or figure out their style yet right. so it's still good uh it's yeah. just to me this was an easy choice for the bottom but it's still a good album but it's just yeah. i mean they've done so many good ones so that's it's also my part of their it's part of their development it's almost like um it's almost like the first couple scorpions albums you know like especially the first one they're just putting all the elements together and they're not there yet they're figuring it all out yeah, I mean, that's not even a hard rock album, really, right? It's more like a psych album. That's right. really good for what it is, but yeah, it's very different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, number eight, what do you got? So next one that I'm going to go with, the next one in line, Storm Blast, which is, I don't have that original one, so I got the, the re-recording here, which sounds, does, obviously, it sounds a lot better. You know, it's a whole new recording, but it doesn't change the essence of the songs. Right. You know, but that, again, it's, it's very primitive still. They haven't evolved too much, 
since the first one. Um, let's see, all light has faded. You got the piano piece during uh, when the soul is brought to hell. That's another one of the English translations because you know it's all in Norway again, right? Norwegian language. You got the piano piece and the keyboards on Chamber of Sorrow, which I liked. That was good. But again, this is not much different than the first one. And this is still the lineup where, is it the same lineup as the first one? I know Selenos and Shagrath, who are still the only original members left in the band. But then so you got- So here, uh, yeah, I mean, on the original, yes, yeah, Selenos sings all the lead vocals. Um, and then right. Shagrath is playing lead guitar on Lead guitar, song. right. And right. it's to, it's the flip now, because now Shagrath is doing the singing, and then Selenos is doing all the guitars. Right. And that, that guy, Ch Chidoli, or however he says his name, he plays drums on this one. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It's weird. yeah. And then on the re-recording, it's Hellhammer on drums, right? So, okay. they, yeah, it's, it's weird. Completely different lineups on both albums, which is strange. Yeah. And you got Silenaz singing on the original and Shagrath on the re-recording. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same songs, but yeah. it's just with more, you know, right. modern production techniques and with a completely different yeah, band. A better mix. Yeah. 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 Um, and this is only a year later after For All Tid. So this is only a year yeah. that they had to work on another album. So it's not much different than the first one, maybe a little bit more evolution in their sound, but yeah. it's still, again, it's primitive. It's rough. The riffs are very classic old school 90s black metal. Right. And they're still trying to figure out how you're incorporating the orchestral sounds. Well, the keyboard's not even orchestral yet. Yeah. It's just more keyboard sounds, you know, and the voice, it's still lost in the mix and the drums are still in the mix. They're way back there, you know? Yep. So it's, it's, you know, I don't The first one, the second one, I never really go back to, unless I go back to the re-recording of Stormblast, you know? So you, so I would say you'd like the re-recording a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. There's very little old school 90s black metal that I like. That's the really poor production. I need something that's got a little more to the to the production, you know? Yeah, I hear that. There's, there's always two sides to that, right? Like I said before, there's right. people who love that sort of thing and don't right, like right. polished stuff, and there's people yeah. who can't just, the, 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 it's just too rough sounding. I totally know. But it makes sense because I'm more of a melody guy, and I like, <laughs> well, I like my power metal, my glam metal, and my traditional metal. You know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Got more melody to it, more structure. Yeah, I hear you. All right, my number eight, I'm going to go with their uh, most recent album from 2018, Eonian. Huh. Uh, so this comes eight years after uh, Abrahadabra. Mm -hmm. um, to me, this is, and I like this album. Like I said, I like all these albums. Um, for me, my issue with this album, it's, I think they go a little over top with the symphonic and cinematicness of their music just a little bit. Oh, really? Um, I think so. I, I like having, I like that element in their music. I just think yeah. this is too much of it. Like I, I think thought it was the previous album before we get to that album. I thought it was well, the previous they both, they both are like that, Rich. I think yeah. for me anyway, I think, I think right. they just got, they've gone a little too overboard and I'm right. like missing the metal in their music. Right. And in, in yeah. addition, uh, I really miss ICX, ICS uh, Vortex. In yes. He was the, the guy that was doing the clean vocals the from days. I want to say puritanical going forward yeah. for the next yeah. three, I think, right? He was on the next three albums. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he's great. And every band that he's, you know, whether it's been uh, Orknagar or Arcturus or whatever band he's been in, he adds so much because his vocals are great. Uh, he's a really good bass player as well. And I'm missing him on here. Uh, right. you know, since he left the band, I'm kind of really missing that element. Um, so here on this album, you got uh, the bass is played by Shagrath and Galder and Silenaz. So there's really on this album, there's no real bass player. They're all doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. You got this guy, Garalaz, who's playing piano and keys. Dare is on drums. He's been with the band for a couple of years now. Um, you know, there's some blast beats on here. There's some heavy stuff. The unveiling is really good. Really good opener. Uh, Interdimensional Summit. Um, I wrote that one down, too. I like that one. It's good, but man, it sounds like Nightwish. It's, it sounds like Shagrath singing for Nightwish. It's just, no, that's, that's, my, that's my kind that's of issue. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Etheric is a really good kind of straightforward heavy metal song. Council of Wolves and Snakes is kind of doomy, kind of gothic. Um, yeah. I Overall, I mean, this is a good album. It's really well recorded. It's a great mm -hmm. sounding album. 
but I just find the overload of orchestration is just a little bit distracting. And for me, it takes a little bit away from the, the heavy metalness of it. Um, it, it almost to me sounds like the band is really not into black metal anymore, which maybe that is the case. Um, so to me, it's, it's a really good symphonic metal album. I, I don't even really consider it black metal anymore at this point, but man, but musically it's really well done. Sounds great. Um, like I said, I like this album. I just, I'm hoping that, that they kind of tone it down a little bit for future releases, but I don't know. We'll see, I guess. But That's yeah. interesting you point that out because I thought after I listened to Abrahadabra, then I went played this album right after it. And the, the riffing was much more old school to me. You think compared so? To the, to the previous album. There's such a, a, a tone sound and difference of the riffing compared to Abracadabra. I thought you don't you don't find the keyboards and orchestrations though so overpowering in the mix on this album. That's kind of I what think I, it's. I almost feel like it's almost kind of separate at times from the guitars yeah. and everything. It's almost like they're. It's a uh, not a contrast, but a juxtaposition between the two. Mm. You know, like the orchestration is over here, and then the riffing is over here, and then sometimes they come together, and other times they're like in separate places. On this album, that's what I found. That's what I'm hearing in this. All right, what do you got? Number seven. Seven. I'm going with Enthrone, which is from what year is that from? Uh, let's see. Enthrone Darkness Triumphant is from 1997. Okay. So uh, this is where they're starting to put, put things together more. Oh, yeah. With the keyboards and the orchestration even though this is before they actually get an orchestra into the music because i think it was puritanical if i'm right where they got a real orchestra in there to really expand on the sound so this is created by all the keyboards and everything and even you can even tell let me see in the picture here the guy that does the synthesizers and the keyboards it looks like they're trying to get a little more artistic there with like his clothes right <laughs> yeah like a conductor or some kind of like gothic conductor, right. like a, yeah. yeah exactly almost kind of looks like kind of like the uh the guy that's in power wolf like he's kind of off to the side he's like the conductor the way they got his his presence too um yeah so this album is a little bit of a better mix i wrote down the vocals are still distant though still in the you know far away but i really like spellbound a lot kind of sounds like immortal you know immortals riffing they got those kind of riffs going on in it. Morning Palace is really good. I think that's probably the best song on the album. A little more cohesive connection that I wrote down here between the riffs and the keyboards. And uh, Tormentor of Christian Souls, too, is catchy. It's a good song, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Not as fast as the other songs. So this album, they're creating like a little more variety, maybe? A little bit, not too much. It's still pure black metal, right? But you got your keyboards incorporating more of those orchestrated type of sounds, you know, backing type of things to the music, and it just works better than the previous album. The previous, yeah. Album. Well, they're they're introducing melody to their music now for the really the first time, yeah. right? But it's still it's still rough. It's not it's still old school black metal, right? You're not getting into like Therion or Nightwish territory, not no. yet, no. not yet at least, but. They're they're testing the waters, you know. Yep, yep. But it's still good, it's still enjoyable. I go back to it sometimes. Nice, you know, more on that later. Okay. <clears throat> All right, number seven. I'm gonna go with uh, Abrahadabra from 2010, eighth album. Yeah. I always like the cover. <laughs> the, the yeah, covers are always interesting. <laughs> I was looking that one up, and that cover comes from. Let me check. I'll tell you. It's based off of, if I'm right, H.P. Lovecraft. It could very well be. Maybe. No. Wait, let me see. Yes, HP Lovecraft's uh Elder Gods. Gotcha. I like the way I like the way uh Dim you combines like stories and like biblical things with Yeah, there's a lot of conceptual things in their music. With their perspective on religion and Christianity and heaven and hell and the devil and you know Satan and all the you know, they kind of mix it all up and they give you different perspectives on everything, right? Yeah, yeah. And this was this was a tour, right, where they were wearing all the white outfits on stage. Oh yeah, that's right. It's in one of the videos too. It's in um. Yeah. Wait, I know the song. It's the the first track, right, or the second track? I believe it's so. in uh, Gateways. Yeah, the third song. They're in all uh, white, right? 
Yeah, yeah, which yeah. you can kind of see here, right? Yeah. Which I remember like when, because I, I remember seeing this tour and and people were like, what the hell are they wearing, right? Because, so, you know, they're usually all in black and with the spikes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Right. Um, so here we got uh, Shagrath on vocals and keyboards, uh, Galder on guitars and vocals, Silinov's guitars and vocals with a mm. whole bunch of guests, uh, Darius on drums, Snowy Shaw's on bass and clean vocals, right? Snowy mm. Shaw's been like in a million bands. Yeah. Uh, Andy Sneap plays a little guitar on this album. Garm is on vocals on this album and amongst all sorts of other people. Um, again, this album really showcases the symphonic elements of this band. Mm. Um, but I think this album has a great guitar sound. I mean, I think the guitar sounds yeah. amazing on this album. There's lots of blast beats. You got Shagrat's kind of croaky vocals are really well done by this point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got, you know, when you hear Shagrath, you know, it's him. Um, Born Treacherous, great song. Gateways, yeah. um, you know, is really good. I will say, though, on Gateways, that's like the song where you really want to hear ICS Vortex clean vocals. Yeah. And you got right. Snowy Shaw doing kind of like the spoken word thing. It's not, uh -huh. the same. it's not the same. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I think he would have been Vortex would have been a great addition to this album. But you know, mm -hmm. and then you got uh, you have the female singer Agnet Cholstrud. She does some right. vocals here and there. That's right. uh, kind of weird sounding for me. But yeah, uh, I didn't really like that either. When that maybe that's another thing I didn't like of that from that album that period sounds out of place right there's a lot of people were doing that too at the time yeah adding female vocals for your orchestrated symphonic parts or even just in your music like um yeah. there's a bunch of bands i can't think of right now that did it um but you know musically speaking this is very impressive uh it's mm -hmm. another really good sounding album uh, a jewel chase through coal is probably my favorite song on the album really really good and that's very riffy very black metalish. Um, mm. But yeah, it's another squeaky clean album. I know like the Dimu purists don't like this album and don't like Ionia yeah. at all. Um, right. But I think it's it's good for what it is. Again, it's not one of their best, but I think if you are someone who kind of is not really much of a black metal fan, yeah. you like like maybe Prague or very keyboard heavy yeah. power metal, symphonic metal, I would say- Night, Night Wish, Therion. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it'll take some getting used to the vocals, right? Because Shagrath has that kind of froggy, croaky type vocal style. Yeah. But if you can get past that, I think you'll you'll really dig this music because Ionian and Abracadabra are really, really symphonic metal albums mm -hmm. at their core. It's not that much black metal anymore at this point. But uh, but yeah, good stuff. So it's a good album, number seven. Though. After we do this, go back to Ionian and then go back to that album. And you'll see if you can catch the difference between the guitar sound like I did. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I love the guitar sound on Abrahadabra. I just, I, I just think to yeah. me on Ionian, it's just the keyboards are just way too overpowering. Mm -hmm. um, and not that I, I, I like keyboards in this kind of music, so I don't know right. what I say, but I'm just, I was like, I don't know, I'm missing like yeah. that little bit extra. I don't know. I just noticed that difference though, even between Abrahadabra and um, Death Call Armageddon and, and Sorte Diabole. I think the guitars are kind of similar between Death Cult and, or, and, uh, and Sorte, but Abrahadabra, I think it changes a little bit too. Yeah. Well, in Sorte, as we'll talk about, it's still a pretty savage album. Yes. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I think there was, well, we're going to, I don't want to get too much away. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I, I think <laughs> Death Cult and in and, and Sorte really yeah. utilized all those elements quite perfectly. Whereas oh, yeah. later on, mm -hmm. one kind of rose over the other a little bit. That's just my perspective. Agreed. No, agreed. All right, what do you got for number six? So we're at six. Yeah. So I went with Spiritual Black Dimensions. That one. There you go. Yep, good one. So this one, like when you look at the booklet too, it talks a lot about like, you know, evil and darkness and stuff, but the flesh as well as they have like these kind of Hellraiser images going on in there, right? With the hooks and the, and the flesh going on. So... Musically, kind of similar to, I think, in Throne Darkness, you know, maybe the next step past it with your orchestrated pieces. But this one, you got the melodic vocal accompaniments in this album. That's where they started incorporating that, like on Reptile. Yep. You got the, the melodic breaks in the music. So that's cool. cool. I like that. You know, you're evolving a little bit more, getting more into where they're going next. It's still fast and savage, though like 
the music's not the music's not slowing down. It's not it's not changing who they are. You know, it's just another step in revolution. And also um, the cascading keys. You hear a lot of that in this this album, which is going on. Um, you know, touch more variety. Um, the other two songs I wrote down were Dreamside Dominions and United in what's that? United in Unhallowed. What's the last word? <laughs> Grace. United in yeah. Unhallowed Grace. It's hard to read it on the cover. Yeah. Some of the way they write it this book. Yeah, the lyrics too in the booklet. Very hard to read it. They need like some reprints. Yeah. You know. But um, yeah, it's a it's a cool album. I like it a little bit better than in Throne Darkness. But it's similar. Like, They're kind of like they kind of like bookend each other, I think, these two albums. You know, another step. How many black albums, black metal albums are you? You can barely read the, the logo of the band. You can't read the title of the yeah. album. You can't read the lyrics, right? They do it in <laughs> fonts that are like, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, on the back cover, you can read the, the titles. But when you get on the inside, the booklet, it's very hard to read this. You can't really read the lyrics at all because it's all against a black background. It's really yeah. tough. Yeah. Yep. You've got to have the glasses on. That's true. That's why we wear them, right? <laughs> All right. My number six, I'm going to go with Stormblast, my number six. Um, so again, like Rich, I only have the uh, the re-recording, but I've heard the uh, the actual 1996 album many times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's the last one sung in Norwegian. Again, we talk about the lineups on both albums. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But, uh, you know, again, the original is very crude by more later standards for the band, but... Um, to me, I think this this album, Stormblast, to me sounds more like a mid '90s black metal album compared to like some of their other fellow countrymen, right? What they were doing. Whereas I whereas I feel the first album is just really, yeah. I mean, you mentioned distant and just kind of cavernous. I think this is a little bit more in line with what some of the other bands were doing uh, from that scene at the time. Um, I'm just trying to think of some, you know, like Satyricon and Immortal mm. and uh, Mayhem and whatnot and uh, yeah. um, Emperor. You know, I think that they're m- more in line with that, I think. But there's some really good tracks on here. You know, the gravelly vocals are just, again, kind of yeah. weird sounding and whatnot. Again, it's lo-fi production, but uh, I, I kind of like the songs on here. I think this is Stormblast is um, there are marketed improvements and growth from a songwriting and playing perspective from the first album to this one. And then with right. the third album, way, way more. So I don't know. I, I have, a, I hold a little bit of a special fondness for Stormblast, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's number six, because I almost had this ranked a little bit lower, kind of like you did, but I, I do like uh, the direction that they're going in this album. So that's why I have it here. And yeah, the, the re-recording just sounds a little spiffier different musicians you know you got hellhammers on this mustis is on keyboards he's been a long time member of the band um you got shagrath singing here and whatnot so a galder of course is on here so yeah but pretty good stuff though overall number six okay all right top five yep so i don't have the cd you have it the uh abracadabra yep so um yeah a lot of the things that you said i would agree with um the title actually means i will create as i speak <laughs> okay <laughs> I know, right? there's all these different little uh things that you learn about right what the words mean and what the yeah. titles mean and stuff i was always curious about what that meant so uh like you were saying lots of orchestral layers on this album i think it's a little bit overcrowded sometimes a little too much for me even mm-hmm. though i like that yeah. But there's still several good songs on here. I like uh, Born Treacherous, Gateways. Um, the song Dimmy Borger is cool. So um, it's it's enjoyable. It's strong. It falls right in line with their progression with the last couple albums before that. You know, Death Cult, R.M. Geddon, and, uh, yeah. and Sorte Diabolé. I just think it's a little bit maybe too much with that stuff. With the orchestrations, I could see them pull back a little bit more maybe for it but it's still it's still enjoyable it's still great music you know if you want your black metal more symphonic this is a good album to go with more melody yeah for sure yeah yep. <laughs> cool minor five is spiritual black dimensions from 99 
fifth album, Shagrath, Silanaz, Mustis on keyboards, a uh, guitarist name, Astanu. <laughs> Where to get these names from? I don't know. Um, uh, Nagash on bass and drummer is that to Joel Daly guy or whatever. Um, right. But here you got ICS Vortex on clean vocals on a couple tracks as a guest. He would join the band full time after this. Uh, mm -hmm. And Peter Tagbrin producing, of course, you know. Peter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did produce a couple of their albums, actually. So uh, mm -hmm. right around this time. Uh, you mentioned Reptile before. Great mm -hmm. song. Man, that's just a snarling, snarling track. Love it. Uh, Dreamside Dominions. I think, you know, they're really figuring out how to use the symphonic elements by this time. Mm -hmm. And that works really well there. Uh, you mentioned United and Unhallowed Grace. Great song. Uh, the the um, lead guitar work on this album by this guy, Astonu, is really good. I mean, there's like sweet picking on a couple tracks. You mm -hmm. know, just, I'm like, whoa, where, yeah. where did that come from, right? You never right. expect that on a Dimu Borgia album, especially like an early one, right? Right. Uh, uh, Blazing Monoliths of Defiance, great song. He's yeah. like shag. I think I've seen him play that live once before too. Really, I can't remember. I've, I've seen them live a couple times. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. so I. So, but I, I think this is a to me, my top five. I think are all really killer albums. So I really yeah. like this one a lot. So yeah, Spiritual Black Dimensions is my number five. All right, four. I don't have it either. I go. I'm going with Eonian. Okay. Which I like that, like I was commenting when you were talking about it. I liked this a little bit better than the previous album because I think it gets back to more of their earlier black metal roots. You know, even artistically, like the cover wise, you can tell it's it's peeling away the layers of this, you know, the symphonic stuff and trying to be a little bit more right back to their older black metal roots. Yeah, it's definitely a dark looking album. And I, I just absolutely love this photograph here. Yeah, that's, that's so <laughs> it doesn't 90s. look like more Norway than than, than I, the right. fact that like I know dark it's Norway. Still 90s, you know, uh black metal music, right? Artistically. And then they're um, looking even they're looking even weirder here. I mean, look at this. This is just like so like I was saying before, I think the guitar sounds are I wrote this down that they're more black metal sounding, whether it's the tuning or their effects or whatever they're using. It just sounds more old school to me. Same thing with the artwork. Um, the unveiling I wrote down, space and dynamic space between the guitars and the drum and the bass and your orchestrations and the choirs. So it's like I said when you were talking about it, there's like the orchestration and the choirs doing one thing and then you have the guitars and everything else doing something else. And sometimes they come together and other times they're doing separate things. So it's, I think, a little more root root based yeah to where they came from as opposed to the previous couple albums okay i like that a little bit more than abra cool all right so my number four i'm gonna go with their seventh album from 2007 in sorte diabole this nice. this was a big deal this album remember when this came out this did really well i want to say this one and even the Next one went into the Billboard top 100 somewhere or top yeah. 40, I think. Number 43 on the Billboard charts. I remember buying either maybe this one and Death Called Armageddon at Best Buy, both of them. Yeah, that's when you Which think about it. a rarity finding black metal, right? Yeah. And in fact, if I remember, they headline at the Best Buy Theater Yeah, in the city. And that's... Yes. That's a big deal for a black metal band, I think, at least at the yeah. time, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So this is a concept album. It's the uh, it's the last album to feature ICS Vortex on bass and vocals and Hellhammer on drums and Mustis on keyboard. So this was mm -hmm. basically the end of that lineup. Um, and also to me, a, in a weird way, this to me was the last like true band effort you know like the, the albums that come after it sound like you know a right. couple of the guys and a bunch of other people this to me was uh, a very impressive lineup i think for them and and like yeah. this, it's like they haven't really to me felt like it, it's more it feels like a studio project since then um so and, I, I really like this album it's uh, produced by frederick nordstrom of course who's done all sorts of stuff um it's cold it's hard hitting uh you right. got the keyboards play off really well against the guitars on here sometimes the the keys sound like um horns to an, to mm -hmm. an extent um you yeah. know 
like the first like uh was it the um serpentine offering what a great love song it. It love it and chose legacy just perfect back-to-back -back songs ah so good so good i mean this yeah this is just a really well done album uh golden yeah. and Silenaz are just crushing with the riffs on this album and man hellhammer's yeah. blast beats are just like yeah they almost sound like robotic like it's like an, it can't be human right it's just and the production is so well because there's space yeah. between everything and you can hear all the instruments yep it's yep. not overproduced or over layered it's really good yep yep the conspiracy unfolds is amazing. The sacrilegious yep. scorn, man. ICS yep. Vortex sounds so good on this album. Yeah. That's what I love about this is you got Shag Rats kind of like black metal croak and then ICS Vortex doing these like, you know, I majestic, know. Uh, almost like power metal vocals. And it's just, it really yeah. works well. Sinister um, Awakening too. I wrote that uh, one down. Sinister Awakening, just the riffing on this is just brilliant. Yeah, really good. Um and and this album, like I mentioned before, this album is really ferocious too. I mean, it's this is a heavy, it heavy is. album. But it I is. think the reason why I like albums like this so much is because I think the orchestrations work well to lift up all these songs and add that melodic element, but they don't take away from the the metal right. and the ferocity of the um exactly of them, which I think it's is pure, cool. it's a it's a it's a balance between pure harshness and and savage black metal with symphonic and melodic elements and it's yeah. just well balanced between everything yep absolutely so yeah so i i have i have a lot a whole lot of fondness for this album like i said this was a sure. this was a really big deal when this came out mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of people were disappointed to with the album that came after which we already talked about which i think kind of toned down the ferocity a little bit from mm -hmm. here but uh and yeah a lot of people like the purists were like oh now they've sold out they're playing right. the bigger arenas they've made it on the billboard that doesn't mean you sell out that just means you're doing better Right, exactly. You know, yeah. You're selling out if you go from, you know, making black metal music and then you make a glam album. That's selling out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Complete opposite, you know? Yeah, yeah. But this is good. So, Insorte Diablo, my number four. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, we're at, we're actually at the top three now. Yeah. So, I'm going with Puritanical, Euphoric, Misanthropia. So, this is um the box. Did you ever get this one? The box that it came with? This is pretty cool. That's the other cover because that you know, one's a little graphic. So um, I love, love this album. When I first heard this, I remember hearing, which song was it? Blessings Upon the Throne, I think, of Tyranny or Puritan. No, Indoctrination. Do you remember when Brave Words used to have a magazine? Oh, yeah. Yep. And they used to put the CD sampler in there with all the music that's coming out. Yep. I remember hearing Indoctrination on there. That was my first actually introduction into Dimu. And it just blew me away. Just how, because this album is really cool for using like thrash riffs. Yeah. Mixed with the some of the black metal stuff still. And then incorporating the keyboards and the symphonic elements. But it's still really like heavy, right? And it's still oh, yeah. your, your black metal. But I think, uh, well, let me go back to the track listing here. It's um, a great balance between aggressiveness and incorporating the melody. And you got the Fear and Wonder instrumental, which they work in the instrumentals now too. You got the Perfection or Vanity, which is the last song, right? And Fear and Wonder in the beginning, but Blessings Upon the Throne of Tyranny, Kings of the Carnival Creation, indoctrination i love the maelstrom mephisto oh yeah that <laughs> that's amazing so yeah. good yeah um 11 songs that i'll play from front to back and i don't skip anything yep because it's like a it's like missing mixing a thrash album with a black metal album and this has got the gothenburg symphony orchestra on it as well which is yes yeah, one of the, the first albums to actually incorporate an orchestra right yeah this is uh it's it's my number three as well um okay. this is also a really good lineup of the band. So they got uh, Nicholas Barker on drums, who didn't, I think, didn't he play with Cradle of Filth, I think, for a while? If I'm I think so. not mistaken. Uh, you yeah. got Silanaz, Shagrath, Mustis, um, ICS Vortex, uh, Galder, uh, mm -hmm. and Nicholas Barker. It's a really, really good lineup. I mean, you hit, you basically said everything I would say. This, this is a start to finish, a really, really good, heavy black metal album. Uh, nice use of symphonics uh, and just yeah. great songs. I mean, blessings upon the throne of tyranny. So heavy, 
yeah. majestic. Um, lots of blast beats on this album. The drumming is off the charts. Kings of the Carnival Creation, which has some great clean vocals from Vortex. Um, hybrid Stigmata cool. is really good. A cool booklet to it. Oh, the, 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 yeah, these, demonic, these demonic images associated with the members. This album is a lot about, you know, Christianity versus other religions and things, right? And yeah. darkness and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that kind of perspective, this is a cool album for that, right? Yep. Like, how cool is that image of Selenos? I know. Looking in the mirror. <laughs> you know? Like, very interesting black metal art artistically, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you hit, art, artistic is you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what that's what separates that's what I like them. about them because they created they create like paintings with each of their albums. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's not yeah. like it's not like they're just out to blast Christianity. You know, they're questioning it, things like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it was always the artistic side of the band. I think that always kind of rose above some other groups that were doing this sort of thing. Right. Instead of just bashing it for what it is, you know. Yeah, they, they leave it up to the listener to have your own interpretation. Well, we both had the same number three. Interesting. All right, what's your number two? And you know what's good too, actually, about this album? If you get the right edition, let's see if it's in the lyrics here. Maybe not. Do you have the cover of Twisted Sisters Burn in Hell on yours? I do not. Aha. Uh -huh. So this one, it's hard to read the font though. But if you get the right edition in the, the box, they have a cover of Twisted Sisters Burn in Hell, and it's awesome. Okay. What a great cut. Perfect for those two different voices between the demonic one and the clean one. And they play it, you know, straight down the line the way Twisted Sister did it. And it's an amazing, amazing cover. Hmm. I should go listen to that online. I've never it's heard very it. good. Yeah, it's Ooh. really cool. All right. Number two. Yeah. So going with Consorte. I don't know what else I could say about it that you've already said because it's so good. So you mentioned the Serpentine Offering and the Chosen Legacy. Sinister Awakening is like one of my favorites on this album. The Invaluable Darkness. How great is that title? Yeah. Right? And this is, this is a concept album too. Oh, yeah. About a, a guy that loses his faith, right? I think it goes to the dark side, right? It's kind of like that battle between good and evil, right? Yeah. On yeah. This. And when you look at the videos too, the music videos, they have a whole story going on. Remember those couple videos? Oh yeah, no, I was just watching one of them the other day. <laughs> yeah, the story that reflects the lyrics of the uh, the album. So, you know, this is easy. My number two. I had a had a tough time picking between my top three because I like all three of them almost equally. You know. Yeah. But this one, put this one on number two. Cool. My number two is Enthroned Darkness Triumphant. Wow. Third album. Yeah, I really like this a lot. This is to me, this was the album where I think it all really, really clicked for them. And mm -hmm. but again, it has all the elements. You know, Peter Tochran mm -hmm. produces this one as well. Right. Uh, well, we got Shagrath singing and playing lead guitar, Silenaz on rhythm guitar, Stian Arstead on keys, to Jal Dali on drums, mm -hmm. uh, Nagash on bass and guitar. Um, I think you know, this album. A lot of the song, the tempos are a little bit more mid-paced. I mean, there are some of the, the speedy ones on here too, yeah. but there's lots of orchestrations. There's lots of chugging guitars. Um, I like Shagrat's mix of kind of like the deep kind of roar, almost like a death metal roar with like mm -hmm. the high-pitched uh, black metal shriek. Um, yeah. Love Spellbound by the Devil. I love the keyboards on that. In Death's Embrace is great. Relinquishment of Spirit and Flesh. The Night Masquerade. Tormentor of Christian Souls, a Succubus and Rapture. I don't know. Great album, I think. This this is really heavy. Um, it's very old school black metal sounding, but with better production and with better right. use of keyboards. I don't know. I, I I always hold this one very high for me. Um, I wasn't I wasn't expecting it to come to number two, but I, as I was, yeah. I knew it was going to be a top five for me, Rich. But yeah. I went and re-listened to all these again recently. I was like, man, just something about this album that really resonates still with me. So. That's it's my definitely uh, an important stepping stone for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And wow, we have the same number one. I was not sure that was going to happen. <laughs> right? Yep. Well, we have similar tastes, too, in a lot of this stuff. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So. Death, Death Cult Armageddon, Armageddon, 2003. Which I bought in Best Buy. Couldn't believe it. It was on the shelves, right? A black metal album may, makes it to the mainstream shelves with other heavy metal and pop music and all other kinds of music. I was very impressed. This you is know? the first first album by them I ever bought. 
Oh, so this this also has the burn hell cover. If you have the double, if you have the two disc version. Oh, I do. So wow. it's on here with a Bathory cover, a great cover of Satan, my master. You know what? A lot of times when you get these bonus discs and they have covers and stuff, you listen to them once and you never listen to them and again. I probably haven't yeah. listened to this in since I first bought this, so I, I need to go put Dude, this. Dude, it's a great cover. One of my yeah. favorite covers. I will go listen to that. Yeah, because it didn't even didn't even register with me. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then they got a couple of uh, orchestral versions here, right? Orchestra versions. Yeah. You got uh, another song called "The Devil's Path," which is good too on that second disc. Couple of videos on there too. So if you get the two disc version, it's awesome. But yeah, I mean, so many great songs on here. Um, again, this is the same lineup as the album before. So Shagrat, Silanaz, Galder, Ice right. Vortex, Mustis, and Nicholas Barker. And they're in the groove. Now. They're, they're, they're in the groove. They're, they're in the groove. groove. I mean, yeah. In the groove. Yeah. And if you've never seen the video, guys, of uh, Progenies of the Great Apocalypse, it's awesome. so epic. Uh, it's still power. It's it's still powerful black metal, but it's so epic in scope. It's like watching a mini movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And really, the first like three songs on this album are so great. I mean, you got Allegiance, Progenies, and then Lepers yeah. Among Us. I mean, boom, boom, boom. All three yeah. are just kicking yeah. ass. Yep. Yeah, this this is the album that really kind of put them on the map, sort of. You know, I mean, this this was the yeah. album that got them a lot of attention. You know, and Sorte Diabole was their bigger seller, obviously, but mm -hmm. this is the one that got people saying, "Oh, this is black metal. This is Dimmu Borgia. I, you know, right, right. this is kind of cool, right?" Um, and yeah. produced by Frederick Norston once again. So, yeah, I think this again. It's the first one I ever heard. The first one I ever bought. I still. Mm -hmm hold this one very very near and dear i think the i think going into this assignment i kind of thought this was going to be my number one and then i'm like yeah, yeah it's got to be right i was flipping between this and then sorte but it, it won it out it beat it Sorte's out it's like really a couple, good yeah a couple steps you know a couple points at one by yeah this is great if you're looking for a symphonic black metal album to get into like an introduction yeah it's not too much of too much of the old stuff or too much of where they're going now. It's like a nice balance between everything. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just wonder how many people who are Dimu fans, whether from the beginning or not, uh, yeah, really, really got into them even more with this album, you know, or people mm. who just maybe never listened to black metal before. This is the album that got them in. So it's very yeah. possible. I mean, to land, where'd you say it was number 20, uh, 42 or something? Well, and Sorte was number forty-three. I don't know where this. This one also made a chart and made a dent in the chart. I didn't. I didn't put it. See if you can find it, because I'm pretty sure it, it charted too. I think it did. One sixty-nine. Sure. Okay, well, that's for an album like this. That's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. I mean, number forty-three for in Sorte Diaboli is just like what? <laughs> you're, on, you're basically in the top forty. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It's that's, awesome unheard of right but um, yeah but yeah. musically they they earned it you know yeah but i think there was a there was a lot of metal stuff happening at the time uh, and on the extreme metal side that like people were mm -hmm. paying attention to you know lamb of god was kind of breaking at the same time you had fear yeah. factory still doing really well you know for mm -hmm. this was really the only black metal band that i think was hitting sales numbers like that but there were yeah. a lot of other extreme bands that were kind of uh you know being taken a little seriously i think at the time finally right Probably the only other one that's a household name was Cradle of Filth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. And, you know, and more on the not quite black metal, but like Children of Bodom was also selling pretty well. Yes. Too. Right. So there, yeah. there was a handful of bands that were kind of yeah. making somewhat of a break into the mainstream a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and us yeah. living here on the East Coast in the New York metropolitan area. I mean, we these bands came everyone. constantly. Right. For a few years, they were everybody was coming from overseas. It was really cool. Yeah, Amana Marth also, right? Played here constantly and their albums sold so really well too. And yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Our ranking the catalog of Dimu Borgia. Um, if you are a fan, rank them in the order that you like them down in comments below if you've never listened to this band but you're intrigued after hearing us talk about it for an hour especially um, me who usually talks about the complete opposite forms right of metal music 
Yep, exactly. So, yeah. um, but go check them out and let us know what you think of some of their albums. I, I think uh, you, you probably, if you check out our top five, that's a really good place to start. And yeah. uh, let us know what you think. I think there's a, they have a lot to offer. Uh, like I said, if you're kind of new to black metal or a little hesitant, uh, give some of these albums a try because I think you'll you'll love the orchestrations and the arrangements. I think which are just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, the vocals will take some getting used to, but if you don't mind the harsh stuff, then this will be. If right. you put it into context with the music, it works perfectly because it's it's not the growling like death metal. It's that wicked, right. evil vocal, right? And yeah. it works perfect for black metal. Yeah, it's like a croak. Just just think of one of the trolls in the Lord of the Rings movies, just that are talking, singing. That's what you got. It's kind of kind of similar. <laughs> Kind of like old school Bathory. Well, all Bathory. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like that kind of a vocal. Yep. Right? Sure. Yep, absolutely. So we, uh, Rich and I mentioned Children of Bodom before. So that will be the next uh, band that we have talked about ranking the catalog of. So look for that in the not too distant future. And uh, and I'm, I'm hoping we'll have Rich back on at, uh, in addition to that other thing. So we'll see. Yeah, that. yeah. So uh, cool. And you if know, you know, I'm busy doing stuff for Brave Words and I do stuff for the Metal Hall of Fame too, so. That's right. I'm around, just it's tough splitting up my time all the time, you know? Yeah. But I'm, I'm happy to be back. I'm glad everybody likes having me back. So thank you. They do. You get asked about it all the time. And thank right? you, Pete. And thank you, Pete, as well. <laughs> cool. Hopefully I'll see a couple of you guys at Hammerfall and Halloween tonight in New York City. Well, actually, this will be airing tomorrow. We're meeting okay. Sunday. So, it'll be, so hopefully you ran, if you're watching this, hopefully you ran into Rich at right. Hammerfall and Halloween last night. And uh, Right. I'll be in the photo pit taking pictures. So say hello. Okay. So be on the lookout for him. Are you going to be wearing that Sea of Tranquility shirt or are you going to be wearing a Halloween shirt or something? I might have to wear a Halloween, man. I might have to do it. Okay. Well, be on the lookout. Everybody knows what Rich looks like. So be on the lookout. Uh, cool. Rich at uh, Halloween. Or if you saw him last, like, again, this airs on Sunday. So it right. would have right. already happened, but still, uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you meet up with some folks there. So Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Rich will be back on the channel also in the very near future because he's got a lot of cool stuff uh, he wants to show us and talk about. Yeah, you want me to show you a couple pictures real quick of what they are? Let him, let him wait. Let him wait. So, All right, cool. You, we're, talking about, we're talking about new music, stuff that's getting reissued yes. and re-released, right? Rich, Rich will be back on the channel either this Wednesday or next Wednesday showing off some cool new releases uh, that he's got uh, gotten yeah. recently that he wants to talk about. So we'll have him on for that. So be like I said, stay tuned either this Wednesday or next Wednesday and uh, Rich will yeah. be back. Uh, with some cool things to show off so yeah, cool then, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time so uh, for rich catino imp pardo thanks for watching everybody this edition yeah. of ranking the album stay tuned one week from today uh i don't know what's next week but <laughs> i'll let you know real soon so <laughs> thanks everybody have a good one bye-bye